All right, so, so far with our illustration, we have built up a base color, flat color on top of that. We put a stroke around it, right? We build duotone on top of that, lights and darks. And it's mostly soft edge duotone that we used. And then we added full spectrum. So you see a little bit of green and blues and purples and things getting in there. And then it's all topped off with this black line art on top. And it looks pretty dismal and dead on a gray background without the, the bright white stroke around it. But this is how it would look on white with the drop shadow. Before you finish off, if this was a professional job, before you would finish off your spot illustration, I would recommend that you make another blank layer behind everything and fill it with black. Because the basic understanding, if this is a t-shirt design, a sticker, you know, a spot illustration that can go on any background, just like a logo, it should look good on black, gray, and white. Right. So that's what we're aiming for. Mine looks a little dingy, a little dull, and I think the color hold that I'm going to add now on top of the black line art will help. So a color hold is like an olive in a toothpick on top of the sandwich, right? So we have our black bread on top, which is the line art. We have our white bread at the bottom, which is the blank white background. And then the sandwich filling is base white, flat local color, duotone, soft edge, and then um, full spectrum color. That's the filling of the sandwich. It's a very blah sandwich without that stuff. But now on top, so let's make a new layer on top of our black line art. And I'm just going to, let's paint with a color just so you can see, with a yellow. About 100%. So normal mode, oh, I'm using an eraser. <laughs> paintbrush, nice soft paintbrush, really big. I'm gonna make a little star right there. Make a little star right here. And you see how it's going over the top of the yellow or of the black line art, right? That is a color hold. And then with that color hold, I can soften it with Gaussian Blur. You know, I can make certain aspects feel like they're glowing on and on and on, right? So what kind of color hold would make sense? I don't think this makes sense necessarily. This isn't the golden goose. So what I think would make sense is the most basic kind of color hold that's very common is you actually take your black line art and you select it all. So I'm just going to have contiguous unchecked and I go to my line art and I use magic wand and select the black, right? And then you just duplicate that onto another layer. So the easiest way to do that is not to select the black, it's just to duplicate your line art layer. So you just do command J but then you have to unlock it, right? And what you can do is just add a color overlay. So the most basic kind of color hold is just to replace the black line art with something else. So that shows blue, right? And that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I can take it, its opacity down. I can even make it dissolve. So that blue kind of mixes with the black behind, right? But maybe blue is just not the right color with that color hold.
but there's something about a color hold I like. So what if I try like a br like an orange, a brown? green to move up and down the spectrum here. You'll know what's not right for sure. Actually, I kind of like the cooler colors. Yeah, so maybe something like that. And that just softens it a little bit, makes it a little bit more interesting, maybe. But it doesn't make sense to me for the reds. All right, so that's an overall color hold where there's no solid black anymore. And if I rasterize that, because it was taken from a vector, that allows me to erase away from it in certain areas, right? So if I want black to show in certain areas, I can still do that. And that might be kind of fun. Like what if I, Take a big eraser that's really soft at a low opacity. I'm just gonna sweep over it. So that near the bottom of the line art, it gets a little bit darker. All right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's subtle. All right. So now, how can I make this blood really sing? Well, I'm going to do a specific selection. So that's one olive on top. And I'll mark these color holds in red so you can see that they're special effects. Now I'm going to select just certain parts, have contiguous turned on, certain parts of the black line art. So I'm going to select around the blood there, and I'm going to select around the puddle of blood. So by doing that, I can just create a new layer, and I can just paint those with a red color. So I'm going to use my paintbrush. I'm going to hold down Option and steal a red, and then just paint it at 100% opacity. In this new layer. And I'm going to move that layer up above the other layers. I could even just use the paint bucket, drop it in. So that's a specific color hold. And then I can play with, ooh, it's kind of making my eyes buzz, with levels to lighten it or darken it. And I think it makes sense for it to be slightly darker, but not a whole lot darker. Maybe like that. And then maybe I want to do it in here too. Wrong layer. Yeah. So that kind of draws our attention more to the uh, the the gore of the scene, right? And now we can see if we like it on black. We can see if we like it on gray. 
and if it reads okay on white with the drop shadow. Yeah, I think so. So those are all the color holds. And so I'll label them that way. So this is a target. So very often you'll notice in, uh, in animation and illustration that the, the line actually isn't black. It's actually colored to go with whatever the illustration is. And color holds can be soft. They can be like soft highlights that go beyond. They can be hard edge like the ones I did. But they're like the olives on top of the sandwich, right? So we have the line art. On top of the line art, we have the color holds. that make a big difference. I think that's about where I want it. So now I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to save with the background turned off, but the offset uh, turned on. I think I'm gonna turn off the drop shadow. Now I'm going to save this as a PNG. And this will be my color spot illustration, full spectrum with color holds as a PNG to the desktop that I can put into photo bucket. I already have a flat color version in photo bucket. So this is my kind of all the bells and whistles. But then I also just want a duotone version. So I'm going to turn off the color holds and turn off the full spectrum. And so now this is my, my duotone version. So save that once it's finished saving the first PNG. Now save this as duotone color. So I often like to play with different ways of coloring. It shows me how my mind changed over time. And I'm gonna post all of those in a photo bucket, but you only need to post your sketch, your line art, and then one color solution. So if we move to photo bucket, let me move these into the right folder, easy to find. It's the PNGs that are my finals, right? So there was my flat color PNG. And now we have the one with color holds and full spectrum and the one that's just duotone. So I'm gonna to go to photo bucket. And add those in. And you want it to just look better and better as you make additional coloring choices. Coloring will not save bad line art, right? But it can definitely add to it, support it. And bad coloring can definitely take away from, from good line art. So it does take, in my opinion, it does take a lot of kind of tinkering with it to find the right colors, the right tones to get there. So we're going to do our presentation critique pretty quickly. In the chat, we have the questions you're going to answer. And we'll see what you guys have created. And then I'm going to show you how you can put up your finished PNG that you're super happy with up onto the Redbubble site, if you wish. And as long as it's your own original concept, you can create products, you know, shirts, stickers, all kinds of fun stuff. Do make sure, like I need to do, that once you upload it into PhotoBucket, you title it with your name 
and you, you give them numbers to sequence.